with Lent here, the time is upon us to take up small sufferings for our sanctification. Some people have different ideas about what that should look like. For some, small sufferings are giving up coffee or red meat. For others, the approach is much more severe, with the taking up of traditional fasting practices, like not eating until 3 p.m. and eating little to no meat for the slightly more than 40 days of Lent. Still, a few others think it is their duty to impose sufferings on the faithful during Lent, as seen in this picture from LifeSite News. What in the name of all that is good and decent in the world is that? Let's get into the story, which has the reek of the absurd, which is inappropriate for kicking off Lent, but I frankly have no idea what else to talk about with this. So we're going to talk about this and a couple other weird Lenten things that I've seen. This story comes from Austria. While not participating in the overthrow of Catholic morality going on next door in Germany, the overthrow of taste is evidently under underway. What I've left on the screen for an agonizing amount of time is a giant purple sweater that is cut to be for the largest woman in history, apparently. It hangs in Cardinal Schonborn's Cathedral in Vienna. The artist has a track record of making art, if we can call it that, that celebrates the, shall we say, Berlin lifestyle and mocks the clergy. Why was he chosen for this? Who really knows? But LifeSite has the story about what that what sweater is supposed to represent. Quote, for Lent, the high altar of St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna, Austria, where Cardinal Christoph Schonborn is archbishop, is covered in a larger-than-life feminine purple sweater. The sweater, consisting of 80 square meters of material, supposedly shows the priority of warming love of neighbor, according to the website of the Cathedral Parish. The Cathedral Parish claims the sweater is a modern Lenten veil. End quote. For my money, you can make a fair number of sweaters for needy women out of that and give it to the homeless in Vienna, but again, what do I know? Traditionally for Lent, the insides of cathedrals and parishes are adorned with purple, typically felt or cloth that is used to cover the imagery, iconography, statues, and the crucifix. This is meant to help true Christians prepare themselves to live and ponder the mystery and passion of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ and, of course, his resurrection. Thus, we fast not only from food, but also practice a fast from the good and the beautiful, at least at Mass. Thus, not only is the art covered, but some acts, other aspects of the sacred are omitted during the Mass, such as the Alleluia and the Asparagus in the traditional liturgy. In my own experiences, in the increasingly distant past at, at, during my time at the Novus Ordo Missae, this covering would wait until Holy Week, although that's probably not the case everywhere. But in the traditional parishes, the faithful see these coverings in place typically before the first Sunday Lenten Mass, if not by Ash Wednesday prior. Many, if not most, parishes, regardless of form, follow the custom of covering images if the priest and members of that community have any sense at all. One source refers to this practice as visual privation, where in some places the faithful were not able to see the priest saying Mass at all because of the number of veils in place. Maybe that's what Cardinal Schonborn is going for here, though the idea of a priest being covered by a woman's sweater is probably not the intended image he was going for, metaphorically speaking. But that's not the only bizarre Lenten practice we see coming up. One of the consequences of the Amazon Synod and the document promulgated by Francis is more focus on the environment. To that end, a German diocese is focusing their Lenten fasting to save the planet from climate change not to grow in sanctity on an individual or even diocesan community level, not to break the grip of habitual sins, and not to pray for the sins committed in our past, but climate change. Here's that story. From LifeSite again, quote, Several Catholic dioceses in Germany are participating in a campaign that encourages fasting in order to protect the planet from climate change. In a brochure created by the campaign Klima Fasten, the organizers express their solidarity with the demands made by Fridays for Future. While mainly sustained by various Protestant communities in Germany, of course, four Catholic dioceses have joined the campaign. Apart from the Archdiocese of Berlin, this includes the Dioceses of Eichstadt, Hildesheim, and Rottenburg Stuttgart. End quote. I'll say this in much in favor of what they're doing here. 
at least they're putting their money where their mouth is, so to speak, though this is sort of missing the whole point of the Lenten fast. It would be the same as if I, someone who clearly needs to drop a few pounds, decided to fast for Lent to lose weight instead of maybe to attack the spiritual dimension and shortcomings that lead to the damaged relationship with our Lord and the dominance of that sin in my own life. But even that comparison fails because gluttony is a clearly defined mortal sin, whereas merely eating a cheeseburger or steak isn't. Happy Ash Wednesday, by the way. I hope that fast is going well. Sorry for the food references there. That quote referenced a pamphlet that they linked to, but it's a PDF in German, which I don't read. I barely read my own language, but thankfully, the LifeSite author does, who provided this juicy quote. Here's the thinkers thinking of the organizers of this campaign. Quote, An ethics of enough, which the churches have long been demanding, is becoming increasingly plausible and is urgently needed. The climate fasting campaign offers various suggestions for practicing such an ethics of enough. It is about ensuring that everyone, the present generation, as well as future generations, has enough to live on. But it is also about ensuring that those who have too much can let that be enough, the organizers explain. With this Lenten campaign, we place ourselves in the Christian tradition, which commemorates the suffering in the time before Easter and consciously practices renunciation in order to become free for new thoughts and different behavior. Climate change is causing suffering because it endangers the lives of people, animals, and plants. Protecting the climate requires renunciation. However, it is always a gain if we succeed, alone or in the community, in making life more climate-friendly, states the brochure about the campaign, which is set to begin on Ash Wednesday. End quote. So yes, they decided to start this campaign today, which if they're making this an organized Lenten fast, you know, I guess that makes sense. But the Germans and Austrians are definitely not the only ones who have bizarre Lenten practices. In the past, Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church has given people the recommendation to take on new Lenten resolutions, sort of like New Year's resolutions, and you know, that's actually fine. I've resolved to bump up my spiritual reading during Lent, and I suggest you do the same. That's not the weird thing, though. His Lenten recommendation is to practice kindness. At least, that was the case in 2018 and 2019. At the time of the production of this report, the very public Jesuit hadn't posted anything about Lent to his social media because he was too busy with the LA Religious Education Conference, that hotbed of heterodoxy and bridge building in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles that every year seems to get weird support from some of the local bishops, including the local celebrity auxiliary bishop, all despite the presence of a priest who preaches immorality and error. But keep an eye on what Pastor Jimmy says, because it's always interesting to see what a liberal Protestant has to say on these things. Anyway, I'm sure there are loads more weird Lenten practices that you've seen. Let me know in the comments about those. Though if you have links, please email them to me, because the, t the tendency for links is that they get filtered out. Just briefly, I hope to get an additional video done each weekend, starting this weekend, on an uplifting or at least educational topic, so keep an eye out for that. I promise that at least some of you will find those interesting. Thanks for your support. Please keep praying for the church, and I hope you have a blessed, fruitful, and extraordinary Lent this year. Viva Cristo Rey.